So basically, it's a pretty hilly race, but because the climbs are so far apart, they climbed the Piccolo Stelvio like nine times. It actually meant that everything got back together, sort of a, a late break with Narvaez, Alaphilippe, and everyone else. But now, except for riding for Ballerini, Viviani is supposed to be there, but I haven't seen him, uh, as well as Trenton. So the strongest teams by far for the lead out were Quick Step and UAE Emirates with four and a half K to go. It's a pretty, not too technical run in. Um, you know, it's a little left and right, but the actual last kilometer is super, super wide. It's like four or five line, uh, lanes wide uh, and straight. So it's, there's really not too much stress. You just want to have decent position here. And actually, I don't think you need to really be on the front until a lot later on in the race. And you can see like it's a pretty decent bunch, like considering how hilly it is. I think it's just the distance between the climbs. They're not sort of back to back makes it possible for a lot of guys to get over the climbs where ordinarily you think they might not be able to. Quick step still bossing on, on uh, for Ballerini, who I guess probably the favourite here. Trentine's obviously quick as well, but, you know, that was really it. Viviani, I don't rate that highly. Like, yeah, he won to a Croatia stage, but not great. It was a pretty exciting race before, like quite a lot of attacking, but just nothing really came of it. It was just like, it was too easy in the wheels and uh, Alpers and De Koenig did a lot of work to get it back. So you can see these speed bumps, it is pretty useful to be near the front, but again, it's like, so it's still quite far out and there's a lot of potential to be moved up. I think it's more like you just save a lot of energy when you're uh, higher up, just around the roundabouts and everything else. And it's just a little less worrying with the crashes and dive bombing just because you're near the front. And you can see Alaphilippe has done an absolute monstrous turn. He's been on the front for almost a kilometer now. Um, and I guess the thing is that also helps is like if you are on the front, you can actually save quite a lot of riders if it's if round roundabouts and things like that because you just don't have to pedal. So obviously like you can just go a little bit longer in comparison to a straight running. But now we're inside two kilometers to go. Uh, maybe it's more technical than I said it was. I mean, it is mainly straight. It's just that obviously the roundabouts, um, well, a lot of roundabouts are present. And UAE Emirates here, I think now have a perfect lead out. They've got four riders, 1.7K to go. So... Hopefully going under the Flamme Rouge, they're going to have about three riders, um, which is what you want. Because basically, if you get someone to do that, like, you know, a kilometer to 500, 500 to 200, you're sorted. So you can see one and a half K to go. This guy's got to do 500 meters on the front. I believe um, this is B-Strom on the front. So no stress. The UA at this point really in, in the lead. And I think ordinarily, if it wasn't as technical in the final, they would have really had the perfect lead out. You can see behind though, start, especially on the left-hand side of the road, it's really starting to bunch up, which indicates that UAE aren't going hard enough. Because if they're going hard enough, they would be strung out in one long line and no one would be coming around. You can see around this corner though, like they really messed it up because they just weren't going fast enough. They're starting to get swamped towards the back. You can see their sprinters like almost having to crash because uh, his lead out man ahead of him decided to go on the other side of the barrier. So this was not very well organized by UA and to be honest B Strom just looked battered and I think it's just a little bit too um too long for him to to keep going. Um but UAE do have a lot of other riders uh who they can then take over. So you can see now they're really starting to drill it up even more. And this is what I mean with 700 meters to go they've got three guys on the front. A guy's just done the turn. On this front they should win it realistically. Like they should easily be able to control the front because with 600 meters to go one guy's still there. He's gonna peel off in about you know, a couple hundred meters and like a hundred meters or so, leaving two guys left. And if this guy here does his lead out properly, Ulysses is now finished. The camera angle gets very confused and they decide that they want to go um, watch Ulysses on the left hand side of the road instead of on the right hand side of the road. Um, but you, you know, it's literally just carnage here, like what is happening with the sprint. But this is Italian TV. And then suddenly you just see Ballerini flying through and Ballerini's managed to catch up with Trenton. And I think, to be honest, that we're going to watch the overhead helicopter shot in about a minute. It wasn't really a, a, a Trenton fault, uh, sorry, a lean-out fault. It was more a Ballerini fault. You can see Trenton sprinting here, like, on the right-hand side of the road, and Ballerini's just got too much gas. There's just, like, no way that you can, um, like, compete with it. There's just so much gas. But anyway, there we go, Copper Bonocchi. Um, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this quick video. It's not the smoothest of the videos I've come up with, but alas.